be quicker, but it's going to be a whole gamified experience. I think let's jump straight into it. Let's chat about the sewer pass um, because this is you guys dropped a lot of information about their their new drop here, the sewer pass. So you come here and it says get ready to do with the double O a key dash, right? So it says Jimmy the monkey's atomic shit has ripped a hole in the space. Time continue. <laughs> And now he's passed out in the toilet in an ultra-secure outhouse. Is the key to a mysterious and very important box stuck in his butthole? Sure is. we got to get that key, and the only way is through the bowels of the board Ape Yacht Club sewers. Claim your pass. So this is where we see the different type of tiers, depending on what board Ape Yacht Club um, NFTs you hold. You will get different tiers of a pass. Then on the 18th of January, the sewer opens. And you're going to be able to get into the sewer. And um, then you're going to have this gamified experience where you've got to try and find gems amongst the shit. Okay. And depending on what you find will determine the rarity of your NFT when it finally gets there on the 8th of Feb. Because you're going to be playing all the way from the 18th of Jan until the 8th of Feb. Okay. So you've got three weeks. You can play as many times as you want. And players will be rewarded based on their performance in the sewer. When the sewer closes, the leaderboard freezes. After scores will be validated, and eligible sewer passes will prepare for the summer zings, and the highest score gets the key. So the the, the truth is, is just having a sewer a sewer pass is not going to guarantee you um, to get a key. You have to actually participate um, and come somewhere on the leaderboard. So a couple of initial thoughts on this. I mean, first of all, there was expectation that this would have been able to be done in um, other deed, mm -hmm. yeah, in on other deed itself, and it's not. It's a separate little game to that. The other thing is that I mean, I know that the whole thing with bored apes is that the apes are bored and have got so much money and nothing better to do. But I don't have fucking three weeks to cancel everything I have going on in my life and sit here playing in a sewer. Yeah. And I, I don't know how many people do. Um, so so that's also another thing that people are realizing is that it's going to take a lot of time and energy to get anything worthwhile. And, yeah, there's been a lot of FUD. As we've seen, the floor's gone down about 15 to 20% on all the e uh, Yuga Labs ecosystem. And I was wondering what you thought, Kate. What are you thinking, my bro? Man, I was literally thinking the exact same damn thing, bro. I was like, wow. So you pretty much have to be a gamer to capitalize at all on this. But then I, but then I thought about this, Philip, because I don't know if you saw Ready Player One. I know people make fun of me for this because I allude to Ready Player One quite a bit because I just, I just don't believe. I mean, I know that's a very futuristic setting, but I don't think we're far away from an experience similar where you are totally immersed in a world where you get to fuck around and do whatever. But in that game world, it, it also mattered. Like, can you complete the race? Can you complete these challenges? If you can't, you're fucking useless, basically. You're not going to get all the cool stuff. And I thought about that because I was like, is it always going to be this way where you have to perform in some capacity to win? And I think in some ways it will be. I think some games are going to take a certain direction. Like Board of Yacht Club, once they opened up the other side, it's like, okay, you just introduced X amount of millions of fucking dollars. The takeaway here is now that the other side is now you are a gaming company which means you have effectively cut out 80% of people because 80% of people aren't gamers at all. Um, so mm. I don't know, man. Board Ape Yacht Club ecosystem scares me because they're so bullish. But at the same time, dude, if you take away some of the hype and momentum, you're like, oh, fuck. I could see someone else coming in and, and taking over. But it, it would be crazy, bro, to see someone flip Board Apes one day. That'll be iconic. Yeah. Look, I think it's nice that they're trying something new and innovating. I think it's too childlike in general, just the shit and all of this. I know that that's their, their roots and they're trying to stay close to their roots. I don't particularly like it. Um, Kate, I'm actually going to try. I'm trying now to join the spaces again. The other thing is that, so you get the mint pass, which is what it's showing over here. For those of you that can't see the screen on Twitter space, it's just t the first step of this is a mint pass. Then you get to evolve it, right? And by playing in the interactive skill-based game, then after that, there's another mini game. And then after that, you can either do another mini game or you get to combine it with your board aid kennel club. So by having a board aid kennel club, you don't have to pay the third game. So this is this is like a ways away. You're only gonna find out about it 
you're only going to find out about your mint pass turning into an Evo 1 on the 8th of Feb. And then there's still Evo 2 and Evo 3. Dude, that's, that's a little bit confusing. Much. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't know. I feel like they're really flexing their creativity here. I just don't know like if it's too nerdy because it's kind of like when when any Discord pops back up and you're like, yo, like what's going on? And they're like, well, we're like building some stuff, but it's like you don't really know what percentage of your audience or what kind of what percent of your buyers, like what percent of Boy Biot Club people give a single fuck about this, dude. They are just trying to be part of the Boy Biot Club ecosystem. I think these things, and when you introduce these things is try and trying to be the builder of them, it just gets super high risky because it gets fucking complicated and there's a bunch of nonsense going on um and then philip i was gonna say for the for the twitter space dude i normally do my streams at one because right now we're competing with the top five streams all at once fuck the name is going leaves going threat guys going elio trades is going like everyone is on spaces right now it's like the most heated time so um i think if we get anyone in spaces it'll be a little bit later on in the show all right so currently is there no one in the spaces do everyone's in Thread Guys and Elios right now? Not a single person. Mm -mm. All nuts. right. Well, I appreciate we appreciate the five guys who are here um, mm -hmm. on YouTube, and then I can stop worrying about Twitter Spaces and just focus on this. Um, let me know if we get anyone. We could like make them a a, a golden Twitter Space person because <laughs> well, they don't you, know have to, you have to think about this, Philip. Like with TikTok, TikTok and Twitter are very similar. I'm, I'm attacking both similar in a content way, like TikTok and you and uh, Twitter right now. You can't like, there's no, like your, your followers don't matter on those. Like no, nothing yeah. matters. Like, cause you're not making really content on that platform yet like that. And to, to get people to, sh to tune into a show on spaces, you have to show up for like four weeks straight every day and like actually show mm -hmm. up and be there. So it's like way different than anything I've ever built. I've always just done one-off videos and then live streams once a week. But like to do a show like this, I think it takes like a few weeks before people even realize you're doing spaces. Like they just don't even bother mm -hmm. scrolling across, you know, they just click on the first one. Well, you know us. We don't we don't give up at the first hurdle. So we'll carry on. Um, sure. So I just want to I want to finalize this. So the, the, each surpass belongs to one of the four tiers based on the Yuga Lab assets that you hold, and then each tier has a, a point bonus. So the higher the tier, the the bigger the bonus that you'll be getting is right. Then skill matters. So you've got to really try play the game. There's going to be a number board, and the best of the best scores will get the best of the best of what. Gary is summersing. Gary is that dog. So the points really, really matter. I imagine that has to be rarity. And then go on the power trip. So before a run, you'll be able to buy a power up pack with eight coin. And that will allow you um, to have a booster for 10 minutes for, from when you purchase the power up pack for eight coin. Mm -hmm. So two eight power up packs are totally optional. And the more that you use, the, the longer you get there. So, I mean, it's really quite complicated. I mean, I know the other yeah. riddles were really um, very complicated, but this one is going over three weeks, and it's just going to be interesting to see the buy-in, you know, where the guys are going to commit the time needed. You will get your diehard fans who do it, um, but I do think you're going to have a lot of people that will be excluded from it because they just don't have the time yeah. to, to be able to put into this. Dude, the 